happy Friday. It's Joe Lines, and uh, I'm going to walk through what I worked on this week. Um, so first off, I actually started the week introducing hot strings to a friend. She was trying to, um, she's looking, she needs to, to change jobs. She's moving towns, and she's trying to get used to doing stuff on LinkedIn. And um, I introduced her to using hot strings to help write personalized messages to people um, and to be able to, of course, you don't have to copy paste, right? To basically either type, you know, two, two letters and um, send the same text or even turn it into a hotkey and send that text to the person to personalize the invites. Um, so that was one of the first things I did. I also um, prepped for the intro to auto hotkey webinar. So if you haven't seen that, if you're new to auto hotkey and just want to learn the basics of um, sending hotkeys or hot strings, we had that this week. Um, I'll try to include the link here in the, the uh, notes. Um, but also we demonstrated copying from one program and pasting into another. So that was a, a fun little example. Not not necessarily the best way to do it, but it's an example of how easy it can be, right? And if you're doing something like this, which most of us do, right? We're in one program, we need to copy stuff, go to the one and paste. And like, hey, if you're doing it a lot back and forth, th that process can be automated really easily. Um, the next one, let me see here is, uh, I got my little notes on the side. Um, I, I have um, a... Uh, hotkey to open in a given folder um, to open a directory. Uh, sorry, the command prompt there. So the hotkey, I think I put it in here. So, whoa, hey, that was weird. Let me go back in here. There we go. So it's, um, I have it set to be control shift P. And when I do that, this, this is a function that's in my library. So I can just reference it this way. I don't have to have an include. Um, and I get the path to the open directory. Um, here is where, if you want to go get this function, you can get it. Um, and, and then it basically says run a command window with that, um, changing directory to that path. So as a demonstration, if I have this folder open here, I can hit, um, control shift P. So control shift P and bam, now I have a command prompt right in that folder, um, wherever I am. So it, it looks at the active, um, Explorer window, and then we'll go make a command prompt there, which... Um, I actually still use a command prompt pr somewhat regularly, running running various things. So I thought that was pretty handy to have. Uh, my next one, and that's what we actually started off on, was uh, I read this book by Joseph Kosselman. He, he was a guy, he was a business guy out of like the 40s, I think, 40s and 50s. And, uh, but he, he had these billboards that he um, he ran. And just some of them were fun. Some of them were great um, sayings. But I, I, I loved a lot of them. And then I've been adding to it. So these mostly were his. Um, and by the way, so um, I actually grabbed these because I had his book. And instead of typing all in, I um, I used my OCR off of my um, screen clipping tool. So that was really handy. So let's let's just pretend like this, this wasn't actual text where I could highlight it. Let's say it was an image. Um, let me zoom in a little bit more so it probably would work a little better. So in my screen clipping tool, of course, I can highlight it like this, right? But if I hit control T with any luck here, now it's telling me it's performing OCR. And in a second on the clipboard, and this is what's now on my clipboard, right? So it grabbed that using OCR, not from actually copying it. So anyway, I wanted to be able to quickly um, add a mem both to Facebook and to LinkedIn. And, and I wanted to randomly select from this file where I'm putting in quotes that I, I really like. So um, in my main script, um, I actually, let's see, where is that? Way up here somewhere, apps B, here we go. So um, so first I have um, auto hotkey, when I hit apps key and B, it's gonna launch Chrome and launches my LinkedIn feed and then launches Facebook, both like that. And then it reads that file, um, and then it w first I need to get how many rows are in that file. And so I store, um, I basically increment here and I'm storing, um, I'm adding to A, A every time. A, a is just a random text I, I wrote, it doesn't have to be A, A. Uh, but I, what I needed to do was know the max number of rows. And then I say, okay, now let's randomly select between one, because there's no header row, and the max rows. So randomly select a row and then go in and use the file read line and store it on the clipboard and read whatever that random row was, right? So actually I should put here, read the random row. I'm trying to be better about annotating things. Um, and then basically after I do that, I have it pop up with my little um, notification uh, function, which I've, I've mentioned before, but it's it's somewhere on the, the forum. Um, let's go ahead and give it a try here. So if I hit apps key and B, so now I just put um, that on my clipboard and then 
what I usually do is I'll come in here and I'll, I'll, I'll leverage Facebook's automatically where I can, man, it's running slow. Come on. I'll turn it into a, a mem, like with an image or I'll, if it's funny middle ages, when you stop having, yeah, actually I did that one recently. Well, whatever. Let's, let's do it again. So I'll go ahead. Let me zoom out one level and share that. And then what I do is I actually leverage my screen clipping tool and I'll do this. And then I come back over to here. Now what it did is it just wrote, it, it stored that as an image on my file and then stored the path to it on my clipboard. And I'm gonna post here and this way in LinkedIn, I actually, and I could have selected it right here cause it's, I use this folder a lot. Um, and now I can just post it. And so really, if I'm cruising through this, um, I can do it in about probably like 20 seconds or so. Um, so now I just dump that to both of those. Um, just a fun, easy way to kind of keep it, keep your feed up to date. Um, so that was that. Let me um, look back at my list. Uh, another one. So I was working with um, a lot of files and I was generating these files. And let me go ahead and I'll delete this just for now. And I need to launch my merge files program. So I'm going to run it. But basically I had a lot of files in the same folder um, that were all text files, but but I had I created this function to make it easier to be um, dynamically, I can update it to what I want, right? This happens to be all text files in this folder. And then um, it, what it does is that merges it all together and I can choose whether I want it. Let's just walk through the script here. So first I tell it in my function, I tell it what's the path to the folder? Um, what type of extensions are you looking for? Um, What's the name of the file you want to create? This is one of the reasons why I love AutoHotKey Studio, right? As I click in here, it shows you where you are in your parameters. You have the, the color highlighting change underneath it. Uh, that Studio is the only one I know that does this, and it's it's super helpful. Um, so the new file name, if I want to um, delete the existing file that had been merged, which is probably, I always want to do that, right? Otherwise it's going to keep appending and appending and I don't want that. Um, so I just throw a one, in, actually the default's a one anyway, so it'll always do that. Um, and then the second one is if actually I want to show it and here I, I haven't quite decided yet, but, um, down below I have, if it's a one, it's going to dump it into this list view uh, that I had built previously. I just call my list view table function and it pops it into it. If it's two, it'll dump it to studio's output debugger window. And if it's three, it'll run the file in my default text editor. So I, I, I like showing this by, oh, you know what? Let's quickly walk through some of this. So here's my function call, right? Where I, I go into here. Um, I also figured, you know what? Sometimes I might forget to, I might include the this last backslash and sometimes I won't. And also in the text extension, sometimes I might include the, the dot um, and sometimes I won't. So in here I'm trimming First, I trim both the, the directory, the last slash off of it, just, just so it's consistent, right? And then I, I trim off the period, if there's a period there, on the extension. And that way I don't have to worry about did I include it or not. Um, so I just trim them both off, and then everything beneath assumes that they're not there, which is, is just much easier to me. Um, and then here is where I, oh, you know what? That's funny, because um, I think I decided I always want to delete the file, um, but I hadn't updated this. So let me go through, because again, I would always want to delete that merged file. I don't ever want to just leave it there. And that gets rid of that one. There we go. So now I've just updated that. So now it just automatically deletes um, the merged file. And then it says, okay, let's loop over all of the files in this, di what directory and what extension do you want to use? And then as it's looping over, it builds this list. I should have called that like file list or a list of files um, instead of just files. But anyway, it builds a, a path to, to each one with a, a line break at the end. And then um, when I have that in files, so this here, I'm now, I create a for loop and I start parsing over that list of things. Um, and each one, it's gonna read each one in as a UTF file. It's gonna store, um, oh, you know what? Cars, that shouldn't be here. I thought I updated all this to, because cars is what I had based it off of, but I, I wanted to create something that I could always use. So cars, this should be more like a uh, file read cars, um, data, but I think I've already used data, all data, all data. Actually, you know what a great thing in studio also, let me type data here and, and notice when I click on it, it's highlighting it and it shows you the underscore, which means there's another instance of it. Now I'm going to type um, 
data here. Oh, now there is another data. Oh, but that's just the word. So see how it's just the word? I used merge data here instead of, um, it's not in a variable. And I was worried I was be reuse, reusing a variable. So um, there we go. Now, not that it, it still works fine, right? But um, I was just trying to keep it more generic and that way it's it's easier if I ever share this with somebody. Um, so let's see, where was I? So I I, I read the, the that file um, this was just showing me where I was. I can get rid of that also. Uh, and then I start loop. I, I use my, um, oh, sorry. So this is looping over that list of files. And then I say, now go read the first file, um, and store, store the row in data. And then here I start looping over that, um, file with the line breaks. Uh, and then if it's the very first file and the very first row, is, do I get this right? Yeah, the first file is I. This is my outer loop. K is my inner loop. So it's the first row and first file. Then go ahead and store the header, right? Because almost all the stuff I have have headers. And so um, I just made that a default. I could have done a little more complex things and, and put it in my parameter and my function that if it has a header or not. But I figured, you know what? Almost everything I do has a header. It's really rare I don't. So I just didn't want to deal with that. Um, but store it as header um, with a line break. And if not, and then this is where actually I had, I hadn't put this in here, but if it's greater than one, right? So if it's not, and then my inner loop, which is each file, I never want to grab the header. Um, so only do this if K one K is greater than one, add, um, the row data with a line break to all data and keep, this is appending it each time. Right. Um, so after it goes through these loops, then it'll write, and here's where, I, I write both the header and that's why it was important to have the line break. Um, where is that right here? Right. So, so I, I put that into the header. So put the header oh, right here, sorry, header and all data. Um, and then I tell it into what directory, the same directory I was in with the new file name, which is part of the name, of my parameter with the given extension. I'm just reborrowing cause it's going to be the same type of file. Right. Um, and then this is where I say, Hey, if the show is equal to one, pop that bad boy into my list view table, which I'll, you'll see here in a second, um, or dump it to site output window, or just go ahead and run it. So let me go ahead and run this. And let's see, um, you know, um, so one is going to, which one was that? It's going to show it. It's going to do my list view. So I'm going to run it and hit a button. Oh, you know what I need to do is, um, show you the, uh, the folder. So now I have merged here, which I didn't have before. Let me, let me redo this. Let me delete this just so you can see it in action. Um, I'm gonna hit my hotkey and there it created the file. And this actually is a list view of what was in that file, right? And notice the header stay up top. Um, it, it, I could have had it look at the data instead of the header to set the column widths, but on average, I'd rather just use the header. And, and so this goes through that. And um, so that's with the list view. And then let's change this to a two, which will dump it here instead. So two, save, reload. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to notice it delete here. Let's see. But we can't see it's 914 and now it's 915. So let's see if it updates. So notice that that changed in time. And it didn't do my list view, but it dumped it here to my output window. And now I can easily see there's 2,384 rows of data, uh, but that is including the header because it's in here too. Uh, and then the last one is, is just going to run it, which will probably open it in sight, which is on the other screen here. But um, let me go ahead and, and do that one just to complete the series. Three, save, reload, run. And then it just ran the file and opened it here. So, um, that was just a fun one because I could leverage some of the other stuff I'd already written. And that's one of the things we talk about a lot in our webinars is, you know, often you, you end up writing something and you think, oh, that's all how I'm going to use this. And then you realize later you can repurpose things over and over in so many different ways. So, um, I think that was the, the bulk of, I mean, I did some, oh yeah, actually there was one other one. So this data, um, here are, are cars at given locations. Um, so this one is at, at this address in, um, Portland. Um, and what, um, what I needed to do was on this example, I had the address, so I needed to geocode that, which means I get the latitude and longitude for a given address. Now I could have, um, 
I could have done this with uh, uh, Google's API for their Google Maps. However, there would have been a charge in each one. And I happen to have a, a program from Microsoft called MapPoint, which I figured it had a com object and it sure did. So I, um, I used the com object to go through and geocode everything for me. And so I had worked on that one. Um, I'm not pulling up the syntax. I'm just going to walk, uh, explain it, uh, as far as that, that goes. Right. So, so that, that could, because I had, like I said, this example, there were 30,000 files, uh, oh, sorry, 2,300, another file I had, I had over 30,000 cars and like, I don't want to be paying that much, right. Each time I run this thing. So it automated going through and geocoding the cars for me. And then I had a different one where I actually had the Latin launch, but I didn't have the address. And so, um, again, I used map point and I did a reverse geocode, which basically says, Hey, what's the address or at least the nearest address, um, to this latitude and longitude. That one was a little trickier, but I just cheated because I didn't really care specifically about the exact address. I just needed more about the, the, the city, state, town, and zip code. Um, and so what I did in map point was they have, um, nearby places. And so I took that latitude and longitude imported into map point and then said, what's the nearest location I'm sorry, near, nearest street address, nearest property they have in their POI, points of interest. Um, and then I took that city, state, zip, and then assigned it to that Latin launch. And like I said, it, it it's not perfect, but um, for the most part, it was good enough for my purposes. And again, it's free. It just runs on my computer and cranks it out in no time. So that that's basically what I did this week. I also had a lot of caffeine this morning, if you can't tell. <laughs> anyway, um, hope you guys are doing good. Keep out there. Keep crushing it and automate and... Uh, I had a, a nice post the other day that said, "If uh, hey, if you're doing something, you know, three times a week, uh, you should be automating it or delegating it. And uh, I, I, every time I realize, you know, you slowly keep looking at what you do every day and you realize, man, there's so many times I do the same thing over and over. And uh, so just, you know, break it down. You don't have to automate everything, but automate as much as you can and keep it simple. All righty. Have a great day. Thanks.